So one of the most asked questions is, how do you stay motivated? And if you've been online at all, you know that a lot of people are answering that I don't stay motivated, I stay consistent. And I I, I agree with that to some degree, but I think it kind of takes both. But today I wanted to a little bit talk about tips for getting motivated and staying consistent with your weight training. Welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. I'm Lynn, and this is the show where I share strategies and practical tips to help you stay fit so you can look and feel young after 40. So let's get into it. So I think the first thing and the most important thing is really to understand what are your goals with the weight training. So what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve long-term health gains, uh, add a new habit into your life, or are you looking for some kind of quick fix, get ready for summer, want to look great in a bikini kind of solution? Uh, Because I think um, if you want to have a quick fix, want to look great in a bikini for the summer, thing, then weight training is not going to get you to that, at least not weight training alone. You will need to definitely be looking on your, at your diet and preferably working with somebody that can help you with that. Now, of course, weight training is a super important thing to be doing when you're dieting, because otherwise you'll be losing a lot of your muscle mass when you go into a calorie deficit. Uh, But weight training alone is not going to be like a quick fix diet. And and then setting your expectations correctly is important. So I I see too many people who uh, start weight training and they're like, oh my God, I've been to the weight room like for four times and why, why am I not seeing anything yet? What am I doing wrong? And well, <laughs> you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. You just haven't been doing it long enough to actually see any results. So building muscle is a long and tedious, tough process, and you are not going to see it overnight. Okay, maybe when you're in your 20s and you happen to have great genetics that you're you build muscle very quickly Uh, and you just naturally put it on, then yes, there are going to be individuals who have that kind of results. But I think that most of us are not going to fall into that category. And so it's going to take us a little bit more time and effort. And so you definitely need to make, (laughs) have some very uh, realistic expectations as far as that goes. And then Then also think about like, what is realistic as far as sustainability for your lifestyle? The fastest way to fall off the weight training um, train is to like set your uh, expectations way too high and then like go in like, like crazy all or nothing. All right. So yes, ideally you would have like three to four days a week that you're in the weight room. Yes, that is absolutely if, if, and that's what I do because I'm really, really trying to maximize muscle, but oh my God, it is a struggle to fit that into my calendar. I really have to work and prioritize, but I am super motivated. So, so I am making that work for me, but I think most of the women that I meet and most of the women that I coach do not have anywhere near the desire that I do. So for them, like the two days a week already is going to be, um, going to be like much, much more realistic for them. And especially if we think over the long term. So really think about like, what do I have time to do? And, and where also can I do it? So some people have gym memberships and a good gym to go to and other people don't, or maybe you want to do a mix. So there's definitely a lot you can do at home just with a pair of dumbbells. I spent almost a year training exclusively at home on the floor of my bedroom, right? I had just enough space to roll out a yoga mat 
and I bought weights and, and I started with fairly small weights. And then as I got stronger, I got online and bought used larger weights. And, and then at some point shifted to the weight room. And now I'm actually thinking that so that I can fit in the four trainings a week, how can I juggle that so that I could do one of them at home? So yeah, you need to think about well, how how can you make this something that you can do consistently? One of the things that helps a lot of people be consistent at the gym, like going to group fitness classes, is the fact that those classes are actually scheduled at a particular time. You know, oh my God, I had, oh, I, I love body jam or I loved this one teacher who taught body jam. She taught it on Sunday afternoons and she had such amazing energy that the women that were in that class, we were like cult followers, right? <laughs> of this teacher. And through COVID, when they only allowed nine people in the room for body jam, I mean, people would get up at two o'clock in the morning to book the one of those slots. And then people would go stand at the gym waiting to see if maybe somebody didn't actually show up that day so they could take the slot. I mean, that was crazy <laughs> love, a passion for that, that class. And yeah, so the fact that it is always on Sunday at a particular time made it really easy. Like you organize your life around it, you know, you have that favorite class, you know, on, on whatever time it is and, and you go and weight training because it happened, like it doesn't have an exact set time. It's something that's easier for people to kind of shift. I'll go an hour later or maybe I'll go tomorrow after all, or, you know, whatever, but Hey, if you really want to be consistent, calendar it in, put it in your schedule. So what I do is on every Saturday, I look at my next week and I look at when are my kids games? Do I need to drive my daughter to horseback riding? Do we have an orthodontist appointment or, you know, anything like that? Do I have book club in the evening? You know, whatever might be on my calendar. And then I fit them in. And I tell you, it's not easy. I have to, <laughs> I have to do some carpooling, sometime beg other parents for help, ask my ex-husband, you know, hey, do you think you could do the ortho this, this time? These kinds of things, but I get it in the calendar. And I would say that that is the number one reason that I actually successfully am able to get myself to the weight room is I stick it in the calendar and I make it work. Sometimes I even spend my lunch time uh, cooking the dinner so that I have dinner ready for the kids. They reheat it in the microwave and I'm off to the gym. So calendaring, absolutely number one, do that. Two, you definitely need to know what you're going to do when you get there. It sucks to go somewhere and especially at the weight room and be like, um, what should I do here? What about this machine? What about that machine? I wonder how this one works. No, 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 no. That is not a recipe for success. Don't do that to yourself. So go in there with a program and also make sure that you know what the exercises are before you go in. So if you have videos that show like how you do the thing, watch them before you go into the weight room. And let's say it's a cable machine or whatever, then try to mimic, you know, what is the setup? Because often they'll be like, hey, you want to be at a little bit this angle or that angle, or let's say you're learning Romanian deadlifts for the first time and, and you need to think about the hip hinge. Well, you can practice all those things at home, you know, before you actually go into the weight room so that when you get there, you're confident in the exercises that you're going to do and you can just get to it. So that is really important. And make sure you know what weights you're going to put on. So track, please, please, please track what you're doing. You are not going to remember like, oh, was it 20 or was it 25? <laughs> you know, all you, you, write it down, use a, a tracker. There are plenty of apps that let you track, or I like to use just pen and paper 
and uh, and write it down, right? You write down what weight you used last time, what reps you did last time. And what I actually like to do is that when I have done uh, my sets of a particular exercise, I will actually write a little comment to myself that, okay, I think I'm ready to go up or next time aim for this many reps or oh, my shoulder was not feeling great or my form isn't so great yet. So I don't want to go up yet. I want to work on my form in this one before I go up. So, so, you know, you help yourself, like coach yourself as to what you're going to do next time. And then a final tip that helps me a lot because I do not always feel like working out, you know, but I've got it in my calendar, right? I get myself there. I walk into the weight room. I put my headset on and I press play on the exact same playlist every single time. Okay, so I don't think you need to have the whole playlist be the same, but I definitely, this is something that has helped me enormously. I always have the same warm up song, happens to be Panic Room. <laughs> so when I start hearing that in my head, and at the same time, I always do the same warm up. I have one warm up for when I'm doing upper body day and another warm up for when I'm doing lower body day. So when I press play on panic room and I start doing my upper body like moves that I do for my warm up then my brain my body just it like shifts right into the gear of okay now I know what's coming it's going to be a workout today <laughs> and and it's amazing how much that helps the rest of the playlist can be whatever but but really try that and let me know if it works for you but that has been an amazing uh tip for me and uh and i'll finally say that you know if all of this sounds super super intimidating like going into the weight room you don't need to so i spent the first year -ish, you know at home and you can definitely make tons and tons of progress uh at home too. But there, let's keep these same principles. Put it in your calendar, okay? On Monday, uh, after work, I'm going to come home and I'm going to put on my workout clothes. I'm going to go downstairs in an hour and my kids and my husband, you know, whatever, my partner, everybody knows mom's working out now. I'm working out now. And then have the program. So when you start, you know exactly what you're going to do, right? That you're not like, okay, well, what do I feel like doing today? No, 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 no. You know what you're going to do today. And you know what weights you're going to do, how many reps you're going to do. You start with that same wonderful, same music with the same warm up, and get yourself in the mode, okay? So it works in all cases, all these tips. So yeah, so that is how I think the best way to stay motivated and stay consistent with your weight training. Remember, this is something that you want to be doing for the rest of your life. If you don't know the benefits of weight training yet, go back to episode number two, where I really go through it, uh, through five of the main benefits that you will find from weight training. If you find this podcast useful and helpful, and you know somebody else that is looking for fitness advice and tips, please share with your friends. I'm really trying to help people get knowledgeable and up and going with their fitness in their 40s and 50s. And um, remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. And I will see you next time. Happy training.